Burt Reynolds is a real hero, and he can take more crashes, oh, more fire, Hello, gorgeous. more love, I'm yours. <laughs> more hits, and more stunts than any star in Hollywood. That's why he wanted to make Hooper. This is a picture about stuntmen, you know, and uh, stuntmen have always been my favorite people in the picture business. So it's time that somebody really did a movie about them and made them the real heroes. For a first-hand look at some of these real heroes, we went to the set of the new Warner Brothers film, Hooper. During the next half hour, we'll join Bert, Jan Michael Vincent, Sally Field, How you spell your name? James Best, you're right. When you're right. Brian Keith, Robert Klein, Roll all the cameras. director and legendary stuntman Hal Needham, John Marley, Terry Bradshaw, and the greatest collection of Hollywood stuntmen ever assembled to make one movie. We may be in trouble. Without stuntmen, there would be no business. Uh, I mean, they make heroes of all the actors. They do risk their lives doing very dangerous things to make a picture very exciting. The movie Hooper is the story of three generations of stuntmen. Burt Reynolds stars as Sonny Hooper, the greatest stuntman of them all. Years of experience have taken their toll on his body. But he's still the best in the business. He tries things that he wouldn't have ordinarily tried because this kid's done them. Jan Michael Vincent plays Ski, the brash young stuntman with big ambitions. Brian Keith plays Jocko Doyle, a happily retired stuntman full of beer and good memories. Bert is the number one, and Jan is the new kid in town. And I'm the guy that's been there. James Best plays Cully, Hooper's best friend. He too is an aging stuntman, already being phased out to make room for the new breed. He's an older stuntman who's a little bit over the hill, and, uh, and Bert sort of lets him hang on, and sort of carries him along. And I think it's an exciting film to make that it gives you a real excuse to do a lot of action and see maybe uh, into a little bit of what stunt people are all about, uh, which will change the image, I think, that a lot of people have. I found most of them were very intelligent. I kind of enjoy that. I expected them to be senseless types. And I think they care about so they, what they do very meticulously, and they're scientists in a way. I think everybody would like to do something terribly dangerous. I think it's thrill, the excitement. It makes them feel alive. I see it. I feel alive when they're through. All right, let's go. Get back. Okay, folks, let's not get too comfortable in this area. All this stuff has got to be moved out. This whole area has got to be cleared for the cherry race. See, uh, right. see how fast we can go. Right. Any problems with us, Bob, I should know about? Just a lot of good luck. <laughs> Okay. Let him through there, guys. Ooh, that's good. For 10 years, I was the highest paid stuntman in Hollywood, all right? And they said, how does that, how is that to be? You gotta be versatile. That's the name of the game. Some guys only do horse stuff, and that really limits the work they can do. Unless you're doing a Western, you're not working. I, I don't know one gag that's the same. Everything you do is different. I love it. Enormous competition among the young stunt guys and the older ones. It's awfully tough to be a young stuntman. Because there's so many uh, older guys around who still can cut the mustard. The younger generation are coming on strong and you've always got them in your hip pocket. Well, I was just telling Jan that, um, first of all, it was gonna have a handful. And it's time to use his legs, not just use his arms, because if you just sit in there and you look like an idiot, they'll just pull you right out. You gotta brace your knees up against the chariot and really take it and try to win. How many times do you want to go around this thing? I want to go around at least a couple. Okay, because when I do the thing, I'm going to do three. Okay. And on, on the, because I'll tell you, start, I can just tell you from just rehearsal. <laughs> By the second one, I'm going to be really on there. Okay, like okay. so when I come around twice, go around I'm once, there. twice, then and stop right stop here. Stop right here the second time. Uh, Tom, keep them in as tight as you can. On the wide angle, I'm holding this and that chariot. And it's cleared out of the intersection, please. Everybody step out of the street. Mark. Hold all the noise, all the talk, everything quiet. Scene 47, take four. Marker? I'm waiting a year and a half to meet you. How's that? I get to perform with Sonny Hooper. Oh, hell, that ain't no big deal. I mean, so... If you go with it, have fun with it, then you're going to be all right. But if you just try to 
play it safe, it's, uh, it's not going to be any good. And your adrenaline just pumping in. You forget about the fact that your legs are shaking and your, your arms are getting pulled out of the socket and you forget about all that because your adrenaline is the lifesaver of us all anyway. In a physical picture like Hooper, athletes expect themselves to be adaptable, but more often than not, they're surprised. That's always the shock to athletes. You know, Terry Bradshaw, I got him part in the picture and we have a big fight scene. days, I think I, he looked like he'd been in the Super Bowl uh, without pads. You ain't ever going to learn, are you, dummy? We tore him up pretty good. Um, he loved it. He had the time of his life. And he was, he's really good. His athletic ability really saved his life a couple of times. You know? and one time he had to jump through a candy glass window and land on top of a bunch of boxes. And uh, he got so excited that he just completely missed everything and landed in the street. <laughs> People to put their lives on the line day after day to make a successful motion picture, they have to get something in return. Action. What the hell are you doing? What's the matter? We haven't got enough pressure. Screw the pressure! My life's worth more than a piece of film. I'll tell you exactly what your life is worth. Your life is worth $50,000. That's the price you put on it when you got behind this wheel. Good. OK. The way you... You really can get up there in the big bucks on, in terms of a stunt is if you start inventing a stunt. I remember when, uh, I think it was Gary McClarty was the first guy to take a bike into a moving car. He got a lot of money for that. If it's a horse fall, uh, that runs anywhere from, say, 350 to $400. That's not counting the rental of the horse. A car will run, it starts at 1,000 and goes up. Fire guys can really be hairy. A fire stunt will start at $1,000. Uh, a high fall is anywhere from, say, $12 a foot and on up. Car jumps is another story. Uh, when you talk about jumping uh, the Los Angeles River, which uh, Needham did, that's crazy. I mean, they, they, they just shouldn't, uh, you know, they, they should give you a lot of money and take you right to the farm lock you in a small padded room and let you count your money. The film features a movie within a movie. Hooper and his friends are hard at work on a disaster epic, directed by the egomaniacal Roger Deal. 6-3, Louis. I play Roger Deal in the movie. He is the villain, and he is a director, and not a very considerate one at that. These stuntmen break their bones, and their nose is bleeding, and he's the type of guy that Take it again, please, and a little more emotion, if possible, you know, that sort of thing. It's a wonderful part. It stands out. I'm the only one in the film with good diction. Oh, Roger, you know how much over the budget we are. I want it, Max. It's right, and I want it. It's a stunt that's never been done. I don't care. I want it. Like the character Klein portrays, director Hal Needham demands and expects the most from his people. So, I mean, we got all that to do before midnight. Considered by many to be the top stuntman in Hollywood, Needham made his directorial debut last year. This is the second film I've done with Hal Needham. I did Hal's first film, I'm glad to say, which was Smoking the Bandit. Hal knows when to direct an actor and how to handle them. He has great communications with the actor and the crew. There's nobody like Hal. He's fantastic. He underestimates himself, which maybe is one of the things that's good about him. Um, he has terrific instincts and honesty, and he knows when something's not working. And more directors than not don't know that, or they want to impose their own ego on, on a, an actor, and, and, you know, it doesn't fit. And he just says, no, something's not working here. Uh, let's, well, let's work it out, and, and it works out. I call Hal Needham Dr. Danger. That's my name for him. If anything is safe, he'll try to make it dangerous. Uh, Warner Brothers will never be the same over there, because I put Bert on, on the outside of a helicopter, put the helicopter way out there and he's standing out on the strut, right? I mean, you're talking about a superstar, big, high, expensive actor, and had him come in on the helicopter and fall off and do a high fall in the air pad. Well, when they saw it in dailies, I thought I'd be fired. 
he's also a guy that when you do the stunt, he probably could do it better. And I wanted a, a point of view as Bert was getting ready to slide underneath the truck. And all the stuff man was going, I said, ah, give me the helmet. So I went out there with my slacks and s slippers on and everything, no pads, no nothing. Put the camera on and slid underneath the truck. But what it does is it keeps the stuntmen honest. I mean, every day you look around and go, we better do this right, because if we don't, old Hal will get in the clothes and do it himself, you know? Of course, it gives the studio a heart attack. <laughs> Needham did one, in fact, he invented it, uh, in a picture called McHugh, where he rolled one on the beach. I think it went 18 times before it stopped rolling, and he broke his back. What it is, it's really a cannon. I built a cannon 14 inches in diameter and 36 inches long. What you do is you mount it on the car with the muzzle pointed towards the ground, put a charge of powder up in it, put the foam pole up in it, and wire the foam pole so it stays. Now the idea is that when you come in, throw the car sideways, fire the cannon, so it, what it does is just flip the car. When I tested the cannon, I broke my back, shattered some ribs, punctured a lung, and knocked out a couple of teeth. Actually, it was Gary McClarty that wound up doing the stunt in McHugh. Making movies is no piece of cake. <laughs> Stunts don't just happen. They are created. And the creative process is as precise and sophisticated as choreographing a ballet or conceiving a winning football play. See, most people think of stuntmen, they, they think of them as being the kind of people that you put them on a motorcycle, have them take a slug out of their bottle and head them for the wall. And that isn't true at all. Acting as stunt coordinator on the film is Bobby Bass, a stuntman with nearly 20 years of experience. Cut in on some of this stuff, okay? And where you can pull off some of your good gags. Bobby Bass uh, reminds me a lot of Hal in the sense that he's uh, incredibly responsible. We're going to try to make this like a, a bar fight that bar none. We're going to try to make this a classic. Well, obviously, I think Bobby Bass is a great stunt coordinator. Otherwise, I wouldn't have him on the show. He comes by, he's got this guy in a headlock. He hits this guy at the same time. And that camera there shouldn't be there. It should be over there. A lot of those in there. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. Picture, we're rolling. Action. Bobby Bass, I've got nothing but praise for him. I feel comfortable giving him control of the whole action sequence. And we... Thank you. Got it. Are you all right, guys? Huh? For those like Bobby, who make their living by risking their lives, a special kind of protection is needed. A sample of their safety equipment reads like an inventory of a football team's locker room. Elbow pads, knee pads, hip pads, that's kind of the basics. No matter how many pads a stuntman wears, the danger factor remains incredibly high. When you jump 40 or 50 feet, it looks spectacular. And if you go into the airbag the wrong way, you can uh, break your neck. They think because you're a stuntman that you're a superman, that you don't burn, you don't break, and do all these things. That's not true. I mean, uh, you, you have to have things set up, and what you do is create a lot of illusions, you know? Uh, but you have to have it set up correctly. If you don't, you're gonna hurt somebody. I broke a nose and broke a collarbone. And Busted both ankles, broke both shins, uh, lost a kneecap here, and damn near broke my neck. I have broken 42 bones. Oh, well, this tooth and that tooth and this nose. Pride uh, is what'll kill you more than anything else or get you hurt. Uh, your mouth overlaps your, uh, your brain, you say, oh, I can do that. The time stuntmen get hurt is because of mechanical failure. Luckily, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, a mechanical failure can be a matter of life and death. As far as the fire thing, I used a different headpiece than I usually use, so the eye holes were way up here on me, and I couldn't see where I was going, so they had to lead me to the car. All right, roll your camera. All right, All right we're rolling! A smart stuntman's a guy that figures things out and always leaves a back door in case something doesn't go right. Stuntman's only got one shot, usually. All right, all right. Come on! They put it in, in first gear, and uh, when they tapped me on the shoulder, I just gassed it and, and hit the car, and then the fire started real slow. Then it started getting really big. See, I stayed in there for a pretty long time, and uh, I didn't mean to get Hal worried. I, he got a little nervous, you know, because you can burn up in there. Got it! Get him out! Get him out! You know, when you're in the fire suit, uh, you lose track of time. You got your mind on so many things, and you have no way of communicating with anybody. 
Uh, I knew that he only had four minutes of air and that it was about up. Really, I wasn't trying to be a hero. I just wanted to get him out because I knew he's in trouble. Your blood can boil in there because I've been in them where they're super hot. When I say get him out, I mean get him out. The cast and crew of Hooper are working with not only the finest stunt men in Hollywood, but also the top stunt women. Well, you know, there was a time you'd look up at lunch and you'd be sitting across from some guy in a wig with two apples in his dress. Uh, and uh, that doesn't happen anymore because uh, they legally now have to ask if a girl is available. But she makes her move, you make the contact, it's bam, 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 just like that. One right after the other. Okay. We've got three motorcycle wrecks and that's one. Especially tough for a stunt woman to be as versatile. I'd say there's about eight sensational stunt girls right now who can do just about everything. You might need to snug this up. We're doing stunts. Okay. You know, Same speed. Let's if do we it. ain't, well, let's go do something else. Okay, gotcha, bud. We're going to go for it. We're going for it. Oh, great. Big camera. See camera. Action, guys. Go, folks, go. Tough as nails, awful good. You all right? I'm okay. I'm fine. Give me a few minutes. Give me a drink of water. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be all right. Oh, okay. Just kind of dazed me, that's all. Good, good. Yeah, I was good. That was great. Did you, you all right? Go away, Soupy. <laughs> See, we pay ladies a little better than we do men for doing the same stunt because uh, we feel that, that it takes a little more out of a lady to do the same stunts. I got that wreck. Let's go to a new one. <laughs> You don't fool around with them either. They'll <laughs> drop you. Janet Brady, who's doubled me a couple times in pictures. I'm glad she's here because I think she's wonderful. The wheel turned that way. She drove the car, smoking the bandit. You can go over a 42-inch ramp, and if you don't touch the wheel, that thing will just go out there and land flat and run right over the cameras. She's the gutsiest little gal I've ever seen. She's a very cool, calculating kind of a lady. She had never rolled a car until she did it on my show. As you hit the ramp and you turn the wheel and turn the car, you, you know, you worry a little if you're going to get it over or not. Let's put one on in here. Have we got one we can remote from over there against the building, even if we have to cut a hole in it or something? Yeah, sure. Huh? Oh, sure. All right, all well, the positions, for folks, for changing angles. I'll get up here and see how it looks. Everybody got speed? Be here. Come on. Come on. The grand finale of the movie is both grand and final. They were getting ready to destroy 72 acres of the brick buildings. There's a lot of towns that should be blown up, and, and uh, that's what they call urban renewal. Damnation Alley, we've given it that name. I also call it Explosion Street. There's going to be some horrendous explosions, some real explosions that are going to be going off. So it's very critical that if you are assigned, only going to take three or four drivers and put them there that you will be assigned to go down there. You have to have your windows up because there's going to be flying debris. There's going to be Primacord, TNT. There's going to be stuff going off in there. Nobody wants to be on foot. No one, but no one. None of the stunt people will be on Explosion Street or Damnation Alley, as they've called it, uh, on foot. This is the tag of the movie, and it's supposed to be an earthquake with uh, gas explosion, gas mains, and. Uh, buildings and everything blowing up, and our hero car just works its way down through all this chaos, and then it goes over the final jump at the uh, at the bridge, which is the tag of the movie. You go like this. Swing it you down. You drop the thing drop down it. and you go. Okay. Special effects man Cliff Winger is responsible for making things both realistic and safe. The Trans Am will come right into your picture. Okay. No. When Tommy hits that, he's going to come and do this, okay? He, when he, after he, the bomb goes off, he hits himself a nap in the trunk of the police car. Bring him in. In no time at all, we did what I think 
it would have taken the average director and crew and everybody three weeks to do. This is not good, it's not safe. Because Bobby Bass had his act so together, he had his men so rehearsed that I'd get ready to go and we'd do a setup where normally it would take a director two or three days to do something that we'd do in one shot. Okay, let's clear the street down there. Everybody get in position. I mean, we just tore, blew things all to hell over there. Please get behind me. All right, here we go. All right, we're rolling. Hey, camera mark. show ever where there's this much going on in one take. It was a nice ride. My right ear I'm donating to Yale University. Kaleidoscope Films wishes to thank Warner Brothers for a look at the greatest stunt movie of all time. You can hit him, kick him, Johnny abuse him, set him on fire, we'll amuse him. Heaven knows he won't hold the grudge. He'll look you in the eye. After you give a smile, there ain't nothing like the life of a Hollywood stunt. I love stuntmen. <laughs>